Friday night in the NBA, a premier playmaker at shooting guard, Brandon Roy, and the Portland Trailblazers go up against the Chicago Bulls and their prototypical small forward, Lou All Day. Trailblazers, Bulls, up next. And there's a look at the engine that drives the Chicago Bulls, Derrick Rose. It's a West versus East contest here in the windy city of Chicago, Illinois, as the Bulls play one at home. 2K Sports and the NBA welcomes you to our broadcast. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg. You look at Portland. They're off to a slow start this season, but it's still early. This is certainly not the way this team wanted to start the season, Kevin. I mean, they just haven't been able to get anything positive done. No positive momentum, lacking in confidence, and as a result, they're struggling. Let's take a look at our starters for Portland. Roy and Batum filled the wings. Aldridge and Camby up front, and Miller. And for the Bulls, Rose and Dang on the floor. Carlos Boozer and Joakim Noah, they're inside, and Brewer. Now here's Rose. Well, now let's go to Doris Burke, who spoke with Nate McMillan. Doris? Well, like most coaches, Kevin, as much as he'd love to see his guys light it up on the scoreboard, he said the real battle will be at the defensive end of the floor. That's where he feels this game will be won or lost. Thanks, Doris. So defense is the key early on. You know, it's not surprising, Kevin, when you think about the great team. So much of their game planning really starts at the defensive end of the floor. Blazers, Clark, are really the opposite of run and gun. They like to slow it down. One of the slowest paces in the NBA. Well, actually, they were the league's slowest pace oh, team, okay. Kevin, last season. It makes sense, though, if you look at their roster. They want to slow it up and play a half-court style to take advantage of some of that size and depth up front. Now, here's Roy. Now, Camby. Get through, get through, get through. Outside Roy, from 20 feet out. And Luol Dang pulls it down. Clark, a lot of people thought Roy would break out this last season, and he had a good year, but he didn't quite make the leap. Well, part of it was injuries, Kevin. Actually, I think all of it was injuries. This is one of the premier players in the league, and he just wasn't 100% healthy, so he wasn't able to be as effective as he would have been healthy. And he's unable to convert here on the three-point play. We go back to Roy. People thought he would challenge Kobe as the best two-guard in the West. Well, he's certainly moving in that direction. There's nobody that's going to challenge Kobe for that, that particular mantle. Um, he's still the very best. But those players who will be challenging Kobe for that title, of those players, Brandon Roy is certainly at the top of the list. Here's Dang. 20 points for him last game against Detroit. He's picked up by Roy. And Boozer backs in. There's the double team with Roy. And that one's good, Boozer. Boozer's got his second bucket of the night. Well, it's been a good shooting start to the game. Shooting 75% from the field on their first four shots. Outside Roy. Aldridge, the pass to Kim. Poked loose. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Bulls will take it. This, of course, the first opportunity to play Portland this season. Here's Rose. In the game against Detroit, very impressive. Outside, Boozer. And almost gets it to go, so he'll shoot two here. That's on LaMarcus Aldridge. Carlos Boozer, born on a military base in West Germany, grew up in Juneau, Alaska. Very interesting background, Clark. Yeah, it kind of sounds like something out of a movie. I mean, yeah. his parents moved from D.C. to Alaska when Carlos was seven. They kind of wanted to escape the crime in D.C. and make a fresh start. They went a long way to do it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> and the first one drops. Greg Oden, he's checked in for LaMarcus Aldridge.
Yeah. Hits one, then misses the second attempt from the free throw line. Someone was telling me in middle school, Boozer practiced with his dad outside in that rough Alaska weather. Clark, regardless of what the temperature was. <laughs> yeah, and he credits those practices with making him a lot tougher. I mean, Boozer went on to win two state titles in high school and got a national championship at Duke in 2001. Just three to shoot. Here's Camby. That ball, a great assist by Brandon Roy. They took a long while to get a bucket. If they continue to score at this pace, they'll be in for a long game. You know, for these Bulls last season, Clark, they had some drama in the locker room. Maybe people not seeing eye to eye in the front office and on the coaching staff. Yeah, they certainly did. I would call it front office friction. Yeah. <laughs> but yet, despite that, Kevin, good young talent. So whoever steps into that situation has something to work with. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Burke. Brandon Roy admits he's a little backwards when it comes to technology. He was never one for video games. He was the last guy on the team to get a laptop, and when he did, he got a clunker. He doesn't know how to work it. He has to get help from teammates. Roy says, I'm a caveman. I'm not a gadget guy. At least his basketball IQ is pretty advanced, guys. I'm with him, Doris. All these gadgets can be a headache. The first one falls for him. And getting back to what you were talking about, despite all the front office turmoil with Derrick Rose at the helm, the future does look bright for this Chicago team. Well, not only Rose, I mean, you talk about Joe Kim Noah, you look at Lou Dang, he's in his prime, Taj Gibson, an impressive first-year player, so the Bulls have an awful lot of material to work with. No good on the second free throw. Another year for Greg Oden, and unfortunately, another injury. It really is a shame, Kevin. Um, you think about what those Portland fans were hoping for and what they had gone through with Bill Walton 25, 30 years ago. Um, Oden's a great kid. I hope he can get the injuries behind him. So it's Portland now, following the miss by Derrick Rose. Here's Roy. Connects from 13 feet out. He's just so gifted offensively. He's a tough guy to match up with. The Bulls leading by three. Rose passes to Day. Pass to Boozer. Rose against Miller. Here's Brewer. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. It's on Brandon Roy. But the positive going back to Odin with last season, you could see, Clark, the progression from year to year, albeit brief in demonstration. Yeah, and you hope that's the foundation that he's able to build on once he does get completely healthy because you're right, he has made improvement when he's been out on the floor these first couple of years. The first one falls. The Blazers, a team with a lot of talent, but health has kept them from putting it all together. Well, how about this rundown from last year, Kevin? I mean, Oden fractured his patella. Chris Billa out with a knee injury. Batum, shoulder injury, kept him out half the season. Fernandez had back trouble. Brandon Roy, late in the season, a torn meniscus. One of the most injury-riddled teams in the league last season were the Portland Trailblazers. Second only to the Golden State Warriors. So both teams making some changes here. Trailblazers trail by five. Miller outside, and Rose picks him up defensively. Rose against Miller. Shot is off, so the Bulls will take it the other way. They put up a nice win against Detroit the last time out. The job they did on the offensive side of the ball was excellent. Actually, it was great. They took care of every possession, getting a good distribution of their shooters, got a nice flow at the offensive end, and had their shooters, their key shooters, in a good rhythm early on. Free throw drops for Rose. From everything you hear, Clark, the Bulls players have a good locker room, great chemistry. Guys really get along. Yeah, it seems like that, Kevin, and that's always what you're looking for, the intangibles. Guys that want to play together, that want to be together, and that have each other's back. And he makes both free throws. 
talking about their chemistry, I think so many of them are young and growing together on the floor. It naturally comes off the court, too. I think so. I mean, when you've got a group of young guys that come in together, it gives them a chance to grow and mature together, and I think that makes for a... Oh! oh, no. oh no. <laughs> Just toss it up there and let your teammate take care of his business. Clark, really, is there a prettier play in the game of basketball than that? I don't think so. The Bulls leading by five. Covered by Miller. Just five on the clock. Two on the clock. That doesn't go either for Rose. Really not enough defensive pressure there to force that miss. He's got to be disappointed. Seven second difference, shot and game clock. Miller against Rose. From the wing, kept alive. Fernandez up on top. Covered by Brewer. One second left, and that's not gonna go. You know, the defense has really stepped up here to start this game. I like that. They came out ready to take care of business at that end of the floor. Solid defensive work across the board. That's going to do it for the first quarter. Coming up Sunday, November 7th, Brandon Roy and the Portland Trailblazers take on Kobe Bryant and the L.A. Lakers. The NBA season gains momentum. Hoops action.